Hello, hello, my name is Dan Pfeiffer, and today we will be discussing range variables, uh, creating indexes, indices, and uh, how this can apply to a mechanism. So let's go ahead and hop over to MathCAD here, and we'll take a look at uh, just a little simple uh, mechanism. This is an offset slider crank. Now this tool you can use for any mechanism. Um, the reason that I chose this one is just because uh, simply the there's only a few equations and they're short. Um, and we really want the focus to be on wh what happens as theta 2 changes here. We can envision the angles between 0 and 360 degrees um, because it is a crank and that this box is going to slide back and forth so our d value is going to change and our theta 3 value will also change. So um, let's step away from that for a second here and step into just a new worksheet. So here I've got a few variables and I've got a, b, and then we're going to define q. Let's say we want q to be all the values from 1 to 6. Well, we can define any range variable here, let's call it r, by doing r assignment and then you could do 1 uh, semicolon to 6. And if we take a look at that, what does that output? Okay, it gives us a actual, uh, it turns it into a matrix actually. So that's good and dandy. Um, if we wanted to change our step increment, we could do 1 comma 1.5 all the way to 6 and now we're going to have a whole bunch more. Uh, but again, pretty simple stuff. The problem comes in when we try to add scalar, scalar, plus vector. It doesn't like that. This is why we need to use the index idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to first create an index. I between, I is between 1 and then semicolon 6. If you don't specify a um, <coughs> an increment, MathCAD will automatically use 1 as the increment. And if we're going to be using an index, it has to be an integer, so we're going to leave it as is, as just 1 through 6. And then we'll go ahead and define Q. Now Q is, you're going to want to use the subscript, but you have to do the matrix subscript, which you can access through your matrix toolbar here, uh, and it's uh, this X subscript N, or uh, you can do open bracket and we're going to do q sub i indicating that we want the ith term in other words uh, so q sub i is then equal to we're going to assign it to i just straightforward so now that little error message goes away so we can find out what z is a plus b plus q adding the ith term it's adding a scalar uh, to all of these so we no longer have an error message and we'll output a range of values now, how does this apply to mechanisms? Well, if we want to go back to our little offset slider crank here, um, this factor term is just to convert back and forth from degrees and radians because MathCAD requires you to do all your calculations in radians. Um, so I've defined the given information from the problem. Now, we want to go in five degree intervals. So what I can do here is um, 5 times the factor term so that it's how, whatever 5 degrees and radians is and you can if you want to know that number you can just do a little evaluator operator and then we want to go from 0 to 360 degrees um, so 360 divided by 5 happens to be 73 so we are going to do set up a new variable theta 2 sub i, just as we did in the previous problem where it was uh, theta and then to use subscript I used period because now we're using the subscript of telling it which variable we're working with and then my indexing which was the open bracket this not parentheses bracket and uh, then I put i and I want to do i minus 1 because Obviously, my first term, I want to not add anything to it. My first term, I want it to be 0 degrees. And if I look at that, i equals 1, I get 0 degrees, all the way up to i equals 73, which will give me 300. Um, so this, this here is just a check 
I'm going to delete that. And let's say I wanted to check, because it, it's going to get really unwieldy to look at this whole thing. I'll show you really quickly. And if I want to look at that, it's going to be like a big mess on my page. So let's look at some specific term. Well, you can use the open bracket and see what the uh, sixth term is. Evaluate it using the uh, one next to backspace. Now, let's double check. If I change my increment, the sixth term should also change. So you should verify that your programming is correct by, and it does in fact change, so my, I know that my programming is good. Um, so we go ahead, and I don't really need that because it's just going to con And then these are the given equations from the text. You can look in the derivation or whatever. Um, but here, notice I don't have to put the i. It already knows that theta2 has um, incremental values. So um, it's already indexed. And once I do that, I'm going to get a, a whole list of theta3 variables and a whole list of d variables. Now, we can display this in many ways. Uh, again, if I do try to display the entire thing, Q3, it's going to be quite a table. But you can scroll down and find out what the largest and the smallest in radians is. It does go all the way almost to zero there. It looks like it's going back and forth, but this isn't as helpful to me. Uh, so what I want to do is you can use maximize and minimize functions, which uh, we can cover in another uh, lesson. But this one, I just want to take a look at what the data looks like. So we're going to insert a graph. Very crudely, I'll cover some of the basics of the xy plot. So this just tells you, all right, what am I? What are my variables I'm plotting? Well, theta three is my uh, dependent, so I'm going to use Q point and I'm going to use my uh, independent variable, which is the one that changes, which is theta 2. I click off the screen, it automatically graphs it. So we do see that this has a maximum and a minimum angle. I can change my domain and, or my max and min y and x values by clicking in these little bracketed areas. Uh, MathCAD just goes ahead and guesses what it thinks you want and obviously pi is what I want my maximum to be. So this is the equivalent of degrees. Um, and so we can do a lot of things from there. Let's do the same thing uh, with d really quickly before we wrap this session up. And just take a look at inserting graph XY plot. This time we're looking at D as theta 2 changes. And we get our values. Now notice, um, I don't know exactly how this is defined with the origin here. Um, it's going to be a certain way. And then it goes back and forth and it just slides back and forth. And we would expect that our graphs would be sinusoidal. So we know now how to use iterations and range values and how this can apply to a mechanism. Again, I'm Dan Pfeiffer, and uh, here is my email address. I look forward to comments and feedback, as always, and I hope you learned something from this. Thank you.